Football coach Bronco Mendenhall revives the band of brothers and gives his team the identity it lacked for the first half of the season. A program known for its offense is now getting down and defensive. And that defense stole the show against Wyoming, helped keep the Cougars on track for a bowl game at season's end. True Blue's Robbie Bolo gets us started. BYU hoped to get back on the path towards bowl eligibility on a rainy Saturday hosting the Wyoming Cowboys, who had lost seven straight to the Cougars. We felt like this, this, is, a, this is a game that we need, to, we need to take into our own hands and, and, uh, and make sure that uh, we get this one. BYU got it done on the ground on its opening possession, running the ball on eight of the ten plays in the drive and opened with a touchdown for the second straight time at home. Trying to stretch it and get the edge, he does get it turned. Beating everybody to the corner is the touchdown. The defense didn't want to feel left out and also scored points in its initial appearance. Forced to pick it out the back, two points for BYU. Wyoming had negative 22 yards of offense after its first two drives, and Austin McCoy's low punt hit his own teammate, giving the Cougars the ball at the 33-yard line. Brian Correa strolled into the end zone easily, giving BYU a 16-0 lead just over 10 minutes into the game. The Cougars had scored 119 unanswered points over a span of four games against Wyoming, but that streak ended abruptly in the second pass. Quarter. Here's your third down and four, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Keith Lewis, the Leo linebacker, has one guy to beat. Touchdown, Wyoming! You know, I'm, I'm way better than that. You know, coming on the sidelines, as soon as I hit the sidelines, it's, that play's over, so... Uh, I, I didn't think about the rest of the game. That play was over, but just over one minute later, hand it off to Kazan, and he tossed it up. Ball is fumbled, and it belongs to the Cowboys. The Cougar defense continued to dominate. Wyoming had negative 18 yards of total offense at the half, but still managed 10 points after Ian Watts had a 44-yard field goal. Uh, we had a number of chances to pull away, um, but mistakes here or there kept it close. We're one or two plays away from, from turned it into a, a great big to it and you know, just slam. After both teams traded field goals in the third quarter, Jake Heaps hit Luke Ashworth for his first touchdown pass in over a month and his first in front of a home crowd at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It was, uh, I don't know, I can't even put the, I can't even describe how it felt. It was, it was amazing uh, and uh, hopefully there's a lot more to come with. McCoy again hit his own player on a low punt and BYU had another chance to put the game away. But the Cougars hardly moved the ball at all, and Payne's 28-yard field goal attempt was blocked, his first career miss from under 30 yards. Given yet another life, Robert Harone took off for 47 yards, and Carter Samuels found a wide-open Chris McNeil for the touchdown. And it's just too easy. I'm not sure it was a loss of focus. It was simply two mistakes at critical times, but one of them led to so many yards, I don't even consider it a drive you know, because it was more like two plays. Wyoming forced BYU to punt and had the chance for a game-winning drive. Carter Samuels hit Zach Bolger for 20 yards on a fourth and nine to keep the upset hope alive, but soon faced another crucial fourth down. BYU rushes four here, James. Got it down. I mean, we love it when it comes down to us being out there and coming to get the win. And Wyoming's a great team, and it was a great opportunity for us to rise to. We'll probably have some more games similar to this, and one unit will be on the field at the end of After losing four straight games for the first time since, well, any of the current players were born, BYU has won two of the last three. And the difference? They're having fun. If I can describe one word, it's just, uh, just fun. It's fun. That's, that's the main thing is I'm having fun and they're having fun. We're just going back to having fun. This is football and that's what it should be. It should be fun. And, but really, it's only fun if you're winning. Robbie's in studio with us. It's a win, and, and that was fun. Guys like winning. Despite BYU's greatest efforts, they won that game. I mean, seriously, with all the mistakes they made, you thought, you know, they're just giving this to Wyoming, but still came away with the victory. I thought uh, Jake Heaps played a little bit better at times. It was nice to see him throw a touchdown pass. But you look at those stats and you see 81 total passing yards against the defense that's been giving up the earth, moon, and stars, and you scratch your head a little bit and you go, it seemed like they could have scored a lot more. He was excited over 300 minutes since he'd thrown a touchdown pass, never done it in front of a home crowd, so finally they got to see something that they wanted. The 60,000 people that showed up in the rain to watch two 2-5 two and five teams, they got to see something. And he said after that interception, you know, I'm better than this. And I'm sitting there thinking, but are you better than 10 for 18 and 81 yards? Because, you know, Cougar fans have, have kind of primed themselves for expecting that much more out of their quarterback at BYU, and especially out of somebody that was so highly touted as Jake Heaps was. But if they should expect 
okay, we're going to throw for 81 yards and we're going to rush the ball 50 times. I, you know, that's not what they're expecting, but I think they need to know if, if that's what they should be expecting. Well, I'm going to ask you the question that, that everybody wants to ask, at least those sitting in the stands in the rain on Saturday. Um, is Bronco going to try any of the other guys under any set of circumstances? I don't think so. The last few games where I've, I've thought, you know, this has been the opportunity for Jake Heaps to open up once you get into kind of the easier schedule, and we haven't really seen that happen. But Bronco's still saying, you know, we're, we're seeing progress, we're seeing improvement. He's still very happy with the job that Robert and I and the offense is doing, so I don't see him making any change. He's, he likes the direction it's going, albeit slowly going that way. Well, the team picked up a win, and they had to win, so they did what they had to do, and Bronco said that afterwards. Hey, you know, we had to win, and, and they did that. Uh, and so now Jake goes into the bye week and uh, with the rest of the team. A lot of them need to heal up and rest up for UNLV coming in a week from Saturday. And, and, and maybe for Jake, it's just a chance to think things through because he's going to get another defense that's given up a ton of yards and an opportunity for him to go out and have a big game. Yeah, and really defensively is where BYU needs to heal up the most, and that's where we've seen the biggest spark. So I think the offense, this gives them a couple weeks really to kind of regroup and come back together and say, okay, let's get these next three, let's get bowl eligible, and then let's go to Salt Lake and, and let's do something to the Utes, you know, the last time we're going to play together in the conference. And BYU has won the last five games coming off of the bye week. So the bye week has traditionally, you know, Broncos done a good job preparing his team to come back, regroup, and get a victory. Well, the defense is having a good time. And, and they were fun to watch under those circumstances where it's wet and it's muddy and a chance to get in and get dirty. And, uh, and then they saved the day at the, at the end of the ballgame. Yeah, and Bronco said he thinks that's how all the games are going to be. It's going to come down to whichever unit is on the field at the end of the game is going to have to make the plays to win it. And all three of BYU's wins this year, Washington, San Diego State, and now Wyoming, in all three cases, the defense has been the one on the field they've had to make the plays. Two times, you know, they've batted down a fourth down pass and then against San Diego State forced that three and out. But it's been the defense that has won the games for them. All right, Robbie, thank you.